selected. You have control. Welcome to the Historical Interface Museum. You have selected the Roman Empire. All evidence loaded and ready for investigation. Thank you, curator. Load the options, please. Options loaded, Melanie. You have chosen defending the Empire. That's the army, right? Right. Okay, then. Give me some background. By the time of the first emperor, Augustus, the Roman army had conquered 40 provinces and was defending 4,000 miles of frontier. 300,000 men... So why were they so successful? That's for you to find out. The army collection is one of our finest. Why? The army went to a lot of places and left a lot of evidence behind. Ruins like this one. Lambaesis in modern Algeria, home of the Third Legion. Inscriptions from tombstones, like this one from York. Experts, artifacts, reconstructions, the usual variety of evidence for you to select. Okay, I'll take that one. Typical legionaries. If you want to find out more, select reconstruction. We have one on battles, or why not start at the beginning? Recruitment. Okay. I'll be fine. Well, if you're sure. But remember, it's your whole life we're talking about. Twenty-five years. And who knows where you'll be sent. I'll be fine. I'm a Roman citizen, Mum. It's a great honour. And Dad's always going on about the great battles him and his mates won. I don't want my son buried in some back end of the Empire. No, I'll send what I can. A barbarian booty, Mum. Think of it. Although we probably won't even leave camp. All I they're looking for are carpenters, smiths, butchers, not fighters. Maybe they won't take you. Dad's written to the Tribune, a letter of recommendation. <laughs> oh, well, Mum, you don't get anywhere unless you pull strings. I know it's a reconstruction, but where's the evidence for that? Select this papyrus from Egypt. To Julian Domitius, Legionary Tribune, from Aurelius Archelaus. Dear Julie, greetings. I've already recommended my friend Theon to you, and once again I beg you, sir, to consider him in your eyes as myself, for he's just the sort of fella you like. Hold this letter before your eyes, sir, and imagine that I'm talking with you. Yours, Ori. So just one letter and you're in? No. The experts will tell you choosing men is like choosing horses or hunting dogs. If you know where to look, you can tell at once if they'll be any good. The recruit needs a broad chest with powerful shoulders and brawny arms. Long fingers rather than short, no pot belly, no fat ass. And when you find all these qualities in a man, then you can afford to take him, even if he is a bit short. And remember, it's not just you depending on the quality of the men you pick, it's the whole Roman Empire. A uh, slight cataract, maybe. Help, though! Look to the left! Cough! <coughs> Height! 175. Swear him in! I swear to perform with enthusiasm whatever the Emperor commands, never to desert and not to shirk from death on behalf of the Roman state. Third cohort, second legion, heading straight for the back of beyond! Okay, something else. That looks good. Where's this from? Germany. The Roman army in Germany. They were sent where they were needed. Seven legions to defend the Rhine against fierce German tribes. Just three legions for the whole of North Africa. That's a long way from home. Soldiers weren't just from Rome. They were recruited from all over. Here, cavalry from Africa. Slingers from Crete. Archers from the east, maybe Syria. And he's from Britain. All auxiliary troops, half the army, recruited from all over the empire. Legionaries were full citizens. The regular troops paid more. Auxiliaries hoped to earn their citizenship. They were sent into battle first, often taking the brunt of casualties. Where do all these pictures come from? Trajan's Column, built to celebrate his victory over the Dacians. History in pictures on a frieze 200 meters long. 
over 2,000 figures, and a wealth of detail on life in the army. Like here, sacrificing animals to gods before battle, or strapping boats together to form a bridge, and see the standard, each legion had its own standard. What's that? Roman prisoners of war being tortured. Did that really happen? Trajan's column is history from the Roman point of view. As with all evidence, you've got to be careful. All right. Can I have that legionary again? Britain! God for sake and dump. I was hoping for a nice cushy number, a nice garrison town, big stone walls, local girls. But as soon as we arrived, there was trouble up north, and we is marched off the whole legion. They say the tribesmen round here can't be beat, and they live off berries and things. They hide in the forests, and they hide in the marshes, and even though they're stark naked, they can hide all day in freezing water. I was given three gold coins for joining up, but they nicked them back again for me uniform. And me pay's not me own, so I've nothing to send. The bits of it kept back for bedding, food, boots, burial fund. <laughs> All expenses had to be met out of pay. I didn't mean that. Could they write letters home? Oh, sorry. Select a text. They're just thin bits of wood. Not just. They were used for writing on. The ink's gone now, but you can read them under infrared. 800 of them have been found so far at Vindolanda, an army settlement in northern Britain. I've sent you two pairs of socks, two pairs of sandals, and a couple of pairs of underpants. Brocchus to Cerealis, greetings. May you be successful in your mission, dear brother. Surely the governor can't keep you waiting long. We're praying for you. All right, the army. What about fighting? Is this a battle? No, just training. Though someone said their drills were bloodless battles and battles bloody drills. Who? A man called Josephus. Originally, he fought against the Romans, but then became an admirer. If we look at the way the Romans organized their army, it soon becomes clear that the empire was won by skill and not luck. They don't sit around with their arms folded, waiting until there's a crisis. Quite the opposite. It's as though they were born with weapons in their hands. They never stop training. The first thing soldiers are taught is the military step, which can only be learned through constant practice. Quick march all together. Nothing's more important than keeping in step, for troops who march in a disorderly manner are always in danger of being defeated. Twenty miles at least once a week, in full gear, like pack mules, and then back to camp for arms drill. And if you get it wrong, they cut your rations. Barley instead of wheat. Sounds like they had it really hard. Training's tough in all armies. Centurions even carried vine rods, which gave them the right to flog their men. Did they really beat them like that? The Roman historian Tacitus tells us of one centurion whose use of the vine rod had unfortunate consequences. His name was Lucilius, but the soldiers had nicknamed him Old Give Us Another, because every time he broke his vine rod on a legionary's back, he'd yell, Give Us Another. In the end, the soldiers massacred him, broke his body, and chucked him in the River Rhine. After sword training came formation drill, side by side, keeping the ranks secure. The testudo, or tortoise, used to storm defenses. The javelins, a sorry, pila. In battle, they'd be thrown first, either for a clean kill, or more likely, to hit the enemy's shields. See that? It weighs the shield down and makes it useless. Catapults, the ballistas. This one was known as the scorpion. Its sting was in its tail. Who are these people? <laughs> Legionaries, first century AD. No, who are they really? Actors or what? Not actors. You could call them living historians. By acting out the past, they hope to understand it better. Yakite! 
If you have to carry a Roman pack 20 miles or make a meal with a legionary's pots and pans, you'll find out all sorts of things you'd never discover just by looking. Whoa, 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 boy. Oh. But how do they know it's accurate? Select artifacts. Evidence found buried at Corbridge in Northumberland. bronze eye guard for a horse. Selections of plate armor, all corroded. A bundle of pylum tips. A cheek piece off a cavalryman's helmet. Okay, what's next? Now they're fully trained, might I suggest a battle? We pitch camp in Ori. The wild men reckon they go for a night attack. Hack down the sentries and broke in. Camp's on fire, all lit up. We're in a panic, terror in our hearts, sleep in our eyes. The fight's so loud you can't hear the centurion screaming the drill. So by the time we're side beside an order, there's God knows how many men butchered already. And finally, we got it together. Man to your left, man to your right. Plowing forward, stabbing out and up with the gladius. Holding them at the gate as the dawn comes up and somebody sees the standards of the sixth cutting off their retreat. Sheer elation. The enemy caught in our voice. Our lives safe and fighting with honor. A lot of men I knew died. Keep the gravestone masons busy. Did they always win? No. Under Augustus, three whole legions, 15,000 men, were wiped out by German tribes. Why? Look at the conditions. The Romans fought at their best on open ground. They needed space to maneuver. But generally, they came out best. They were better trained, better disciplined, brilliant planners. What's that thing? It's the head of a hammer. Well, what's it doing in the army collection? There was more to army life than fighting. Select the text. Whatever enemy country they may invade, the Romans don't engage in battle before fortifying their camp. And it's constructed in no time at all. There are so many skilled workmen to do the job. If a camp is properly built, the men spend their days and nights safe and sound inside the ramparts. Even if the enemy is besieging them, it's as if they carry around a fortified city with them wherever they go. That's a modern road. But it runs along a route first laid down by the legions. Good straight roads meant the army could move fast to trouble spots. The Romans built over 70,000 miles of road, all to the same design. Once you've invaded somewhere, what better way to keep the peace than by Romanizing the locals? So the legions set to work, building aqueducts, bridges, temples, theaters, baths, libraries. What's this? Hadrian's Wall, their most spectacular achievement. 80 miles long, from Carlisle to Newcastle. It was a tourist attraction even then. It was manned not by the legions, but by the auxilia, many of them far from home. How do you know? The gravestone of a Hamian archer, and a cavalry trooper from Patriana, both base here. What's that? A castle every mile for 32 men, and 15 major forts, like this one, house steads. Even with so little left, the grid system is clear. The same as every other fort in the Empire. What's that over there? The barracks where the soldiers would have lived. Centurions had a room of their own at the end of each block. The granary with a raised floor to keep the grain dry. 
the Principia, or company headquarters. The commander's home with a hypercost and underfloor heating system. Civilian settlements outside the south gate. Communal latrines with efficient drainage. Is there any way of knowing what life was like here? I mean, really knowing. Mostly it's just clues, but some clues are better than others. I've seen them before. They're the writing tablets. Tell Candidus the ox wagon and hides at Catterick should be sent to me. I'd have fetched them myself, but I didn't want to wear out the beasts, what with the roads being so bad. Claudia, come to my birthday party on September the 11th and make my day even more enjoyable. I'll expect you, sister. The ninth cohort of Batavians are back! All men and equipment present and correct! April 25th. 323 men in the workshops. 12 shoemakers, 18 bathhouse builders, hospital workers, potters, plasterers. The wretched Britons wear no armor, but their cavalry is strong. I've been beaten with rods, and I want to complain. I complained to the prefect, but he was off sick. So what would you like now? Where's the legionary? Done 13 years now. 12 to go. Seven more till I'm a veteran. Ooh, that's a cushy number. No fatigues, no guard duty. <laughs> well, more time for the wife and family. Mum's dead, so I've nothing to go back for. Most of the lads settle where they serve. I think I'll open a wine shop. Well, it's a garrison town. You can't go wrong with a boozer. What would have happened to him? Who knows? Maybe he did open that wine shop. Maybe he saved some money for a gravestone like so many others. To the spirits of the departed and of Flavius Bellator, decurion of the colony of York, he lived for 29 years. To the spirits of the departed and to Anisius Ingenuus, medical officer in the first Tungrian cohort, he lived 45 years. Is that the lot? Your allotted investigation time is over. We hope there's been enough evidence to answer your chosen question. Why was the army so successful? All systems disengaging. <laughs>